Ladies and gentlemen. This episode is sponsored by Advanced Skills Company, the official agent of JPI Healthcare in Iraq. I personally use the products of JPI Healthcare in my clinic for years now, and throughout the years, these products have been amazing in terms of providing excellent image quality at the lowest radiation dose possible, and they are durable, reliable, and efficient. I recommend if you are looking to establish your radiology practice, whether in a clinic, in a center, or in a hospital setting, to go to the JPI Healthcare website, see their products for yourself, and then call Advanced Skills Company if you are in Iraq, and these guys will provide the best possible solutions, whether in terms of hardware or software. I will leave the contact information in the video description, and don't forget to use the magic word highlights in radiology, because you will get a 10% discount on all JPI Healthcare products till the end of 2024. Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Highlights in Radiology Season 2. In this episode, we are going to talk about an important topic in the imaging, which is the anterior cruciate ligament tear. Before we start, I want to remind you to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. This is Dr. Ahmed Dhaya Abdul Wahab and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Stay with me. Anterior cruciate ligament is the most commonly injured ligament in the knee, especially in sports where foot plant is at risk. So it's more commonly seen in football and soccer players. Incidence in general population is one in 3,000, usually seen in younger active patients. And the risk is four to eight times greater in women who plays basketball and soccer. ACL injury can be partial or complete. Partial tears are tears that are less than 25% of the fibers disrupted, associated with more favorable prognosis. If more than 50% of the fibers are disrupted, it will lead to insufficiency. ACL reconstruction surgeries have very good results in up to 80 to 90% of cases. Treatment of ACL injury can be either conservative or surgical. Conservative treatment may be effective, but osteoarthritis is a possibility in active patients without reconstruction surgery. Surgical treatment includes ACL reconstruction in active patients, which can be done by bone patellar tendon bone graft or hamstring graft. ACL injury can be divided into three grades. Grade one is intraligamentous injury. Like in this T2-weighted, fat-saturated sagittal image, we can see there is intraligamentous edema within the ACL, with a mass-like appearance suggesting grade 1 ACL injury. Grade 2 is an intraligamentous injury plus an increase in the length of the ligament. Like in this sagittal T2-weighted, fat-saturated image, we can see the ligament is edematous, however, it's still continuous with some increased length of the ligament, while grade 3 is complete ligament disruption, like in these two examples. In the first example, we can see there is complete ligamentous disruption, while in the second image, we can see there is no visualization of the ACL. Complete ACL rupture happens when there is disruption of the ligament within its mid-substance or origin or at its attachment, associated with hemorrhage and synovitis. Avulsion of the anterior tibial spine in younger patients, especially in pediatric age group, can be an associated finding. Also, empty lateral wall sign can be seen, which is absent attachment to the lateral femoral condyle. Fallen ACL sign also seen, which is loss of the normal tension in tear of the ACL plus minus stenotic notch. Like in this X-ray, we can see the tibial spine is avulsed, suggesting an associated ACL injury. Another example in this sagittal CT scan showing avulsion of the tibial spine, most likely due to an ACL injury. Another example here we can see on this X-ray and on the MRI, there is an avulsion of the anterior tibial spine due to an ACL avulsion with ACL injury. Associated features of ACL injury includes bone trabecular injury or impaction fracture of the posterolateral tibia 
and the weight-bearing surface of the lateral femoral condyle. Meniscal tears can be seen, which happens more in the lateral meniscus than in the medial meniscus. Posterior lateral corner injuries are also associated features. The posterior lateral corner injuries include the lateral collateral ligament, arcuate ligament, popliteus tendon, posterior lateral capsule, and popliteofemoral ligament. Like in this example of a fracture of the weight-bearing surface of the lateral femoral condyle in this sagittal and coronal MRI images. Another example in this CT scan showing fracture involving the posterior lateral tibial plateau, which is commonly associated with ACL injury. On this MRI image, we can see the posterior lateral corner injury in which the popliteus tendon is swollen and hemorrhagic, suggesting popliteus tendon injury. Another example here showing the arcuate ligament as part of posterior lateral corner injury. And another example demonstrating the lateral collateral ligament injury as an associated feature of posterior lateral corner injury with an associated ACL injury. Clinically, the ACL injury most common presentation is the physical findings during the physical examinations, which includes the anterior jaw side in which we pull the tibia anteriorly in order to test for ligamentous integrity. Also the Lachman test in which we stabilize the femur with one hand and with the other hand we pull the tibia anteriorly and posteriorly against the femur. Also pivot shift test in which we feel a clung at about 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. Joint diffusion can also be seen in acute cases. There are three common mechanisms of ACL injury. Either anterior translation of the tibia with internal rotation of the femur with vulgar stress and axial loading. This is the first mechanism, and this mechanism is associated with posterior lateral corner injury and lateral femoral condylar injury. The second mechanism is varus stress, which is associated with second fracture. And finally, the last mechanism is hyperextension, which is an uncommon mechanism. So what radiology has to offer an ACL injury? Regarding plain radiography, we will notice deepening of the lateral femoral condylar notch, also known as the lateral notch sign, second fracture, also sometimes seen. As we see in this X-ray, the lateral notch appears deepened, suggesting an associated ACL injury. Another example here in this X-ray is showing deepening of the lateral notch or the lateral notch sign. And on this X-ray AP view, we can see a second fracture, which is an associated finding in ACL injury. In this case, we have X-ray of the knee and MRI showing the second fracture on both the X-ray and the MRI. On CT scan, we will see associated features including posterior lateral and posterior medial tibial fractures. Like in this CT scan, we can see the posterior lateral tibial fracture suggesting an associated ACL injury. The best imaging modality in the knee in general is MRI. On T1 weighted imaging, we will see intermediate signal intensity with the disrupted pattern of the ACL fascicles. Also, knee injuries will appear as hypo-intense edematous contusions with or without fractures which are usually non-displaced. Like for example, in this T1-weighted image of the knee, we can see intermediate signal intensity replacing the ACL with a disruptive pattern of the ACL fascicles. Another example here, we can see the ACL that appears of slightly increased signal intensity with disrupted fascicles. However, it's still intact, suggesting partial tear. On T2-weighted imaging, there will be an increased signal intensity with disorganization and thickening of the fibers with discontinuity. Also, increased signal intensity with or without fracture lines or subchondral contusions involving the posterior lateral corner of the tibia and the lateral femoral condyle and or the posterior medial tibial plane. Like, for example, in this T2 and T2-weighted fat-saturated images, showing the increased T2 signal intensity with disorganization of the ACL, suggesting partial tear. Another example of completely ruptured ACL, on this T2-weighted fat-saturated image, the ACL appears completely disorganized and irregular, suggesting complete rupture. Axial images will show thickening and increased signal intensity adjacent to the lateral intercondylar notch wall. Like, for example, in this axial image showing partial ACL tear with increased signal intensity and thickening adjacent to the lateral aspect of the intercondylar notch. Another example here, we can see the ACL is completely torn in the sagittal images. 
And on the axial image, as we can see the lateral collateral ligament that appears edematous and irregular with increased T2 signal intensity, suggesting an associated lateral collateral ligament injury. Coronal images will show increased signal intensity, replacing the normal hypointense ligament with increased signal intensity hemorrhagic effusion, which is commonly seen. Like, for example, in this images of T2-weighted fat-saturated coronal and sagittal images, we can see on the sagittal image the ACL is ruptured with replacement of the ACL by an increased signal intensity, which can be seen in the coronal image. Other associated findings will include avulsion fractures of the anterior tibial spine, like we mentioned before, especially in children. Also, buckling of the posterior cruciate ligament on the sagittal images due to anterior translation of the tibia. Like we can see here in this image, for comparison, the normal and the buckled PCL, you can see the buckling of the PCL due to anterior translation of the tibia. Another example of a buckled PCL on this T2-weighted fat-saturated image due to ACL rupture. What's the differential diagnosis of ACL injury? Well, the list here includes partial tear, bucket handle meniscal tear, mucoid degeneration of the ACL, and radial tears of the lateral meniscus. Regarding partial ACL tear, it may be difficult to be diagnosed on MRI. There will be thickening or disruption or abnormal orientation of some of the fibers of the ACL. The anterior medial bundle disruption is more common than posterior lateral bundle disruption. Like we see in this T2-weighted fat-saturated sagittal image of the knee joint, we can see the ligament fibers are continuous but edematous, suggesting partial tear. Another example, in this T1-weighted sagittal image of the knee joint, we can see the disruption of some of the ACL fibers, but it's still continuous, suggesting partial tear. Regarding bucket handle meniscal tear, we will see a horizontally oriented fragment which appears as an extra structure in the notch in addition to the ACL and PCL. Like in this example, we can see the bucket handle tear, the meniscus is flipped, showing what's called the double PCL sign, which appears as an extra structure in addition to the normal ACL and PCL. And on this coronal image, we can see the part of the meniscus that's flipped into the intercondylar fossa with a normal ACL and PCL. Mecon degeneration of the ACL will expand the ligament and there will be increased signal within the ligament on T2-weighted images. There will be what's called celery stock appearance of a fluid in between the ACL fascicles. Like we see in this example, the anterior cruciate ligament appears thick with increased signal intensity and with this salary stock appearance. Also, we can see in another example here, this is an image from arthroscopy showing the salary stock appearance of the ACL. Radial tears of the lateral meniscus are associated with ACL tears and it will present as posterior lateral knee pain. Like, for example, in this coronal T2-weighted fat-saturated image of the knee joint, we can see the radial tear of the lateral meniscus, which might be confused with ACL tear. Another example here in this coronal and sagittal images, we can see the radial tear involving the lateral meniscus on both images. Well, this was all for today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. If you have any comments, write them in the comment section. See you next Friday at 5 p.m. This is Dr. Ahmad Zayah Abdul and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Bye.